We, we are live, uh, everybody. But we're also on tape. We are deep down in the bowels of Lee's music. Chris Folds, Nancy Beppel, I've forgotten your name. Brendan? Bennett. 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 Magic Mike and Bill all in the studio today. Episode 80. 80. That's right. You know, that's the actual uh, average lifespan of a male in Canada. It's really? 80. I thought it'd be lower. It's 80. It dropped to 79 and a half in 2020. And what, then cha- it's, what changed uh, after that? I wonder, right? Eh? And then it's 80 right now. And it's, um, it's less than, I think, uh, females is 83 and a half or something like that. So um, <laughs> 35. Nancy just, Nancy <laughs> Depple just went like that. So 35 more years and you're at the, you're at the average. Why, why do women live longer? Uh, um, I don't know. Why do women live longer? I don't know. Mike? Uh, it's because men are really stupid. We do stupid <laughs> things. Yeah, we take chances. and uh, Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, good start to the show. We have a great show today. I'm really excited about our show. We got our first ever taped live music experience. Mike, can you explain what we're doing today? Well, when we heard that uh, Nancy Beppel, the counselor, was coming on to the show, I, I thought uh, she plays banjo. And uh, we thought, wouldn't it be fun to actually do a jam session? So we've got a special song that we're going to be playing for, for everybody. And It'll uh, be our first and, live And a friend of ours music. is going to come on board That's as right. well, uh, Jeremy Nishaw. Yeah. The best hair probably in British Columbia. Mm-hmm. The Jeremy. fullest head of hair. Yeah, he's got Jeremy good hair. Nishaw. Good hair, yeah. Um, he might have cut it. <laughs> oh, did he? Oh, no, that's too it's bad. It's still going to be full. It's still, it's still nice hair. It's still, it's nice, still hair. nice. We yeah. thought it'd be fun to talk politics with Nancy, but yep. also show a different side. Yep. Maybe people don't know. She's 40 years, I think, you've played instruments for. 40 years, and, and she's playing a banjo. And um, you've, she's played it. You've played it on various campaign stops. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember once at the farmer's market, I think you played it at one of those. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's actually cool to find out. We did this feature. Well, it wasn't a, yeah, it was a thing about... 10, 12, 13 years ago, we, um, you know, it's sort of, you need to do some story ideas. So we, we went at the council at the time, and Nancy may have been on council, it might have been between terms. Uh, we, we went behind the scenes, like, what, what, what's, your, what's, your, um, what's your talent, what's your hobby, what's yeah. your passion? And we had a guy, guy who juggled, yeah. another guy who collected rare, uh, rare art. It's really interesting to find out the person behind the person. Yeah, well, we've been getting ripped lately sometimes. You guys are, you know, vultures mm-hmm. going after the, the low-hanging fruit. Who and vultures again? Uh, well, well, he didn't say it on record, but no, it was but a, who, a local politician. Yeah, he said you're a vulture. And I said, no, we're not vultures. And we had a disagreement. Yeah, well, we don't need to who say that, name, Because he was here. He was on our show not long ago. I can't remember ago. who that was. Yeah. That's a good part of the show. But also this, Michael, Mike Miltimore. The Scotties Tournament of Hearts is here right now. We have Olympic champions coming on this show, <laughs> world champions. Okay. Curling Canada Hall of Famers coming on this show to talk Pretty to us exciting. today. It's, it's going to be a good cool. show this day for sure. Not a good night for you last night, though. Whew. Well, it was okay. Well, no, it wasn't a good night for me. And here's here's what why. Uh, my wife, uh, Monica, who's been working at the store here, which has been amazing, um, she went home and she tripped on something I left in the backyard. No way. Yeah. Why did you leave in the backyard? Well, Furry costume? Yeah, yeah. We have a small uh, rat problem in Valley View. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so it. long story short, I'm blaming it on the rats. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a hot tub and I got this hot tub for free from my buddy and, and uh, it didn't have an electronics cover. So I had a piece of plywood over it. And because I was repairing the hot tub, I had a pipe that went down and leaned against the the board so that the rats couldn't get into the hot tub because that was a like into the inside of the hot tub so that was a problem so i had this pipe lying there like this well monica went to check the 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 hot tub and she tripped with both feet on the pipe that i left down and ended up being that she broke her wrist and the wrist was on top of her arm oh my goodness she had a displaced fracture and, um, what do you mean her wrist was on top of her arm? Her, her wrist, the bones dislocated yeah. and displaced, and her wrist ended up, so her arm went up oh, like this. Oh, that's oh my disgusting. God, yeah. Yeah. So what, was she, like, screaming? Huge pain. Uh, she's quiet uh, with that, uh, which is really scary. Yeah. <laughs> and we ended up going to, of course, emergency and um, went through the, the triage part. That's what took the longest. It was busy. I've never How was the ER? It was, it was really busy. Like, yeah. I can understand when they say that things take a long time. It's because they're really busy. Yeah. Uh, and a curious system where the, you had to sit down and your seat placement was your placement in line. So every few minutes, you'd have to get up and move a seat over, mm-hmm. which some people, it was very difficult. So at one point, actually, somebody suggested, hey, maybe that person should be in a wheelchair. 
and we wheeled them through the process. But once we got through the triage process, uh, things happened really quickly. They looked at her wrist and said, yeah, it's definitely broken. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they um, went straight to a bed, and within like 25 minutes, uh, they knocked her out, and she had a new cast on. And uh, the funny thing, well, I don't know. This is where I might be on some sort of list with the hospital. Yeah, you're a predator of some sort, or Maybe. you're a mark man. Uh, as they were... They brought out a little bit of fentanyl for her, mm-hmm. to painkiller, to because they're gonna have to pull her wrist apart to put mm-hmm. it back together. And they knocked her out. And the stuff that they used to knock her out was this white milky substance. And I think I asked too many questions about that. Oh yeah. So how fast does this knock her out? How long? <laughs> and she forgets everything that happened. You know? <laughs> what is it again? Yeah. So yeah. There's no pipe. Baby. Is she angry at you for leaving the board out? That's the scary part. She hasn't said that yet, but I feel it's coming. She so. already dumped you once for panting like a dog. Yeah. So 20, this, 25 years yeah. ago, yeah. Not a good night for you, but <clears throat> us three had a great weekend. Oh. We had just an amazing time together. And what, what were we doing last weekend, the three of us? Well, you know, we're starting to run out of ideas of, of fun things to do together. And some of the stuff lately hasn't been that fun. So I, I hope you remember the really fun thing we did this yeah, last it, weekend. It, 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 was, it, was, it was really, it was a trust exercise that we did. Well, maybe the trust exercise would be better because, uh, Chris, you were the star of it. Right. What was that trust oh, exercise? So that we well, did? the curling is on, the Scotties is on, right? Yeah. And so we went over to Mac on it because that's really quiet right now because everyone's down at the Sandman Center. That's and, right. uh, and we said, well, let's do, you know, that trust exercise where you, in, in school, you, you, you fall backwards yeah. and you catch. We thought, well, let's do something curling inspired. So what we did was we talked our way onto the ice. It was empty. Yeah. So that's the thing is like, I trust that I put my full trust in you, right? We're on the ice now. Everyone's watching and I fall back, but you had seen a sign for a club car vodka. That's right. So you just, was gone. Up, poof, I was I'm, gone. I'm, I'm yeah. out now because you now. saw the club yeah. car vodka. That's right. Thankfully, there was a mattress for some strange reason that you fell on to. From Gord Sealy, it was right there. It was there. a Sealy mattress, and it's fabulously free February right now at Gord's oh. Appliance and Mattress Center, interest-free on Sealy mattresses right mm-hmm. now. So check that out. That I was, was still a little bit groggy, though. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so, <laughs> we were supposed to go to the Aberdeen McDonald's Playland later. Couldn't do that. No, but... What, what, we got expelled from that, actually. We got expelled from that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got just at the hospital. <laughs> so uh, I was a little bit rattled because you, you, you nearly escaped a concussion. You were, you were still groggy, so we had to get some coffee to wake ourselves up. So we... From Mac Island to the North Shore of McDonald's is like it's it's basically uh it's it's a it's a Straight draw to the house hard, hard, hard right, hard right there Straight absolutely there, yeah. yeah yeah bet stamp bet stamp that's right what is it it's the Travago of uh, of betting so if you go if you want to get a hotel room and you don't want to go to 500 sites to find the best uh, hotel room you go to Travago or one of those sites hotels.com and they kind of do all the work for you and get you the best rate bet stamp does the same thing for betting lines and you can pick the best odds uh, for your for your bet they call that line shopping the best place to do it it's an app you have to download called bet stamp use the promo code camloops last week these are still a buck these coffees no they're well, not, not these ones the, the mediums are they <coughs> got one this morning okay buck five there you go mm-hmm. uh let's move on to above the folds right now a special edition we're going to have nancy beppel and jeremy nisha did he cut his hair we'll find out watch them play some music you know, this wonderful Whirlpool here. Um, and if you want something in a lower price range, I do have a floor model for sale right here. <laughs> if you wanna have a look inside here. Um, oh, always knock first, just in case there's a salad dressing inside. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it just, 
<laughs> looking at me it just cracks me up. Funny story, I had a gentleman in here yesterday and he brought his blanket in. He was here three times. Then I finally realized he was an undercover cop. <laughs> Steve's dad jokes are undeniably painful. But there is nothing, nothing cringeworthy about the service at Gorge. <laughs> Jeremy Nisha, Nancy Beppo. Hi. The Loose Cannons, I think we call you. That's the, the, the Camloops last week house band, the Loose Cannons. That's right, the Loose That's Cannons. Right. That's right, yes, with Mike Miltimore. And yes. what's, the, uh, what's the fourth musician's name upstairs? The acoustic bassist. Yeah. Uh, the acoustic bassist's name was uh, Mark Stachowski, and he's, Mark. Our, uh, yeah. he's our store manager. He loves right. to play whenever there's a chance. Well, he was in there like a dirty shirt. That was good. He is a dirty shirt. Jeremy yeah. used to work here. Give us your employment history with Mike. Was he a good boss? Oh, definitely. Yeah, one of the best. Um, yeah, we've done lots of things over the years. Most notably, uh, the River Song demos for his website. I get to try out his new guitars as he invents them and uh, play around with the different pickup settings and different miking systems and that kind of thing. And we record them and send them out on his website so people have an idea of what they sound like. Have you ever told him after a review, like, this one just doesn't sound good. I'm just not happy with this guitar. <laughs> I don't think so? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> he does a pretty good job. Yeah, he, yeah. Well, most of his guitars are top-notch, for sure. What are you up to these most? days? Oh, Did most. Did you say most? <laughs> oh, all of his guitars are top-notch. <laughs> um, recording, mostly. Uh, the wintertime is lots of room for, for studio time. We've got an album coming through with a couple of different bands I'm in, and uh, I'm producing a bunch of different things on the side, commercial scores and that kind of thing. Um, and this week the Scotties are in town, That's so right. I'm, uh, I'm playing there tonight, actually. Oh, at the Patch? At the Patch. Look yes. at that, the Candles Trailing Club. Candles Trailing Club, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, turned into a patch. little baby, too? Yes, yes, uh, she just turned four months old. Four, four months? Four months, yeah, yeah she's young. a little dolly. That's so young. Nancy, what's going on with you right now? You're <clears> in politics, you're a Kamloops City Councillor. What's top of mind for you as far as Kamloops uh, politics right now? Well, I think the good news for everybody is that the council finished its planning for the strategic plan so it hasn't been come out in public yet we haven't seen the document but it is in the works I've heard that there's actually a draft so it'll be coming to council soon and then we will be uh, adopting it and that'll be our game plan for the next three and a half years so for the reader for the viewers here uh, and the listeners on the podcast what is a strategic plan and why should we care about it well you know I would say Garbage and sewers just don't get people excited. No. So what we want to do is how can we make our city a better place? Mm -hmm. And the strategic plan is basically saying over the next three and a half years, is there anything really important that we want to get done besides the basics? Mm -hmm. I mean, guaranteed the garbage is going to get picked up. Yes. Guaranteed you turn on the water, there's going to be water. But and the snow it, may or may not be removed to your satisfaction as well, a taxpayer, but there it, you go. There you go. I think, you know, climate change might take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, the strategic plan is sort of a, a roadmap of what we want to accomplish as a city. Um, for this term, basically. For the, well, or some of it's it for the term and some of it yeah, you're, you're putting the pieces in place for things that might be longer term yeah, as well. Like, yeah. Are you able to talk about supplemental budget items kind of generally um, as far as what makes this a difficult time? What's the most challenging part about um, this time for, for, for council? Um, well, I, I would say this time there isn't really that many big asks on the supplemental budget. Um, I, I would say that there's 10 items. Mm -hmm. So six are from the <clears throat> city staff and four are from community. Um, long term, probably the biggest ask is 10 firefighters for Westside. So that would have the longest long term tax implications for city. It's a million bucks a year going or forward. More, probably, or more going forward more. with all increases. So, and stuff so like. that I would say is the biggest ask. Some of them are, I mean, they talk about buying more trucks because we have staff. They talk about um, maybe putting in more bike paths. That's the a community ask, which I think is pretty cool. If we go ahead with, in, right now the plan is that it would take 20 years, like 
I would be 80, 20 <laughs> years to get the bike pass. You'd still be alive, though, because you're not a male. That's <laughs> so true. You have three more years yeah. after that to go. <laughs> that's true. That's and they, true. they wanted, the bike community wants to accelerate that, ha to ten, have to it by 10, years. and, and it's, it's yeah. spending a lot more money to, to get the, so, yeah. So but the money is there. Allocated money to go into the climate action plan yeah. budget, so we have money for it. But it's when It's, when it's what it, we right? want to spend it on, yeah. and I think you, it's a good spend. Well, what do you think the appetite as a whole from the city is for, for improvements in, in in bike culture and bike lanes as a whole? What do you think the appetite is? Um, I, I wouldn't say it's for everyone, but in the supplemental budget, there's also $5 million for just two highway exits. So we, we are spending money for people that want to drive around the city, but the ask is really to have a, <clears throat> allow people an option. Like, not everybody's going to bike, but there are a lot of people that want to bike. And those that do want to, those who do want to bike showed up in numbers at the budget meeting of uh, February 15th. Uh, them and the firefighters dominated yeah. the, uh, the crowd. So they're there showing that they really want this. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, like you say, people who, who don't bike might say, well, why am I paying for it? Well, you're paying for school taxes even if you don't have kids because it benefits society as a whole going forward, I think. Yeah. Let me ask a question of Jeremy, because Jeremy is, as I assume, a younger homeowner in town. Yes. You pay taxes. Yes. And you see <laughs> yes. them going up every year, and it's, it's tough. What do you think? What, what, what do you think the city should focus on from your perspective as, as a downtown homeowner? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, my dad was a civil engineer who did a lot with the sewers in town. Mm -hmm. And like you say, like, that's a big part of what needs to be focused on, but it's not like it's exciting not the se to talk sexy about, stuff. Right? It's stuff you expect to be working, like Nancy says. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree, though. I think, uh, especially downtown, biking is a, a great alternative to getting around, but it's a little bit sketchy sometimes because there's lots of traffic and there's lots of blind corners and that kind of thing. Uh, an artery that connects up and downtown, I think that'd be a great idea mm -hmm. and something that's attainable, I think. Like, a lot of people have bikes. Is there anything else that when you're sitting around with Delana and your baby and you're talking and maybe you've had a rough day or maybe you've seen the bills come in, is there anything that you recently that you've bitched about saying, I wish the city would do this? Or I wish the city would stop doing this? Well, I don't know. I think a lot of people like me can see problems but don't know what to, to do about it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things is a lot of uh, my like business owner friends have lots of trouble with crime. Right? Right. And, and what the answer is to that, I don't, yeah. I can't really speak to, but I know that's something that needs to get focused mm -hmm. on. Sure. Something okay. that needs to be. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, in the budget, the supplementary budget is... Yeah, addresses uh, one of is, that. One is the community service officers, which... Uh, work with the RCMP. There's a lot of activities that happen on the streets which are not crime. So somebody who's homeless sitting on the sidewalk is not crime. Somebody who is using drugs openly is not crime. Somebody who has, is unhoused and is sleeping rough is not a crime. Mm -hmm. But what the CSO officers can do is help connect those people with services so that they aren't impacting other people as well. I mean, they need the services. The community also needs services to, to so there isn't that conflict. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing work in progress. The Mustard yeah. Seed has a outreach worker right. who walks around downtown all day and connects and gets to know the people. So a little, if that's added incrementally, it has shown to be helping in right. some ways, right? One last thing on the, on the supplemental budget. Um, and just thank you because you, you're making this very, uh, very easy to understand without getting drilling too down into the minutia and getting into the weeds. So let's thank you. What's with the sign? There's a sign. Oh, Tourism Kamloops oh, wants wants. Uh, I know there's grant money in there. I think it's 150 grand overall, but they have 70 grand or 80 grand uh, grant money. Uh, they want to put a sign downtown in Riverside Park, a big sign that says Kamloops. Sort of like the one in Toronto that lights up. Now, this one won't light up initially. And I understand the idea, and they do good work at Tourism Kamloops. The idea is to get people who are visiting here, maybe at the Scotties, maybe uh, this summer at the Memorial Cup, and they want them to take pictures next to the sign and put on social media and spread the Kamloops brand. What's your idea? Because I've heard pol polarizing views on this sign for right. 150 grand, and everyone's going broke. Right. What do you think of that? Well, first of all, I'm. I'm not an expert on tourism, mm -hmm. so when tourism, you, yeah. for, so when tourism Kamloops comes with an idea, mm -hmm. I really have to respect it. Sure, I have to say they've put some thought into it, and they're trying to make Kamloops a funner place. Mm -hmm. uh, also, as far as I know, um, 
the final resting place for the sign may not have been decided. Okay. Uh, the, I heard the it was idea, downtown the idea, was, was, Well, was downtown for yeah. the Memorial Cup, yeah. for sure. Or well, maybe it's a mobile zone. Maybe you move it, it around. Could be, it could be moved around. Yeah. But um, maybe it would be somewhere else after the Memorial mm -hmm. Cup. You don't like I don't the sign know. idea. You don't no, like the sign no, idea. I, I, but I, but I, I, I'm not sure about the sign idea. I'm just thinking, I, thinking of the cost and where it is. We well, all know we're in Kamloops when we're downtown. Maybe you put it outside of Kamloops where you, you drop people in. Maybe go to Kelowna and say, ha, Kamloops. We, we could put it <laughs> in Kelowna. piss them off. Yes. That would be... I'll bring that up. Yes. But... Um, and the reason I, I asked is because you're one of nine votes to say yay or nay to this, I, right? Yay or nay, yes. I, I mean, I got to give credit to Tourism Kamloops for trying to bring our brand forward. They We're just thinking. one right. of hundreds of cities that people can come to visit. Sure. Yep. They're coming up with an idea. I got to respect that they yes. have thought about it. I, absolutely. I'm just asking what the yeah. decision maker thinks of the, the, the proposal. We, we do want to ask you about council chemistry. You can give us a yeah. yay or nay on this. Yeah. The mayor has ruffled some feathers. That's yeah. no secret. Um, how are things in that regard? Well, I, I, I guess I really can only speak for myself and I'm a pretty steady eddy kind of person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that as a whole, council is working well. We have a great group of people around the table who have a lot of experience. And the strategic plan, I think, is evident of it. evidence of it. I mean, it hasn't come out to the public yet, but we got through it. It was, there was unanimity as to what we wanted in the plan. So I think that uh, how things are done, maybe it definitely isn't the same as Peter Milbar, definitely isn't the same as Ken Christian, probably wasn't the same as Mel Rothenberger as a mayor, but in terms of being able to get things done, I think council yeah. will be able to get through it. We, we, we were kind of accused, we have been, of, of kind of being vultures, but do you feel like this is a, a man, manufactured story, or do you think that it was legitimate, it can be a legitimate concern if people are so at odds on, on council? Um, I'm not saying they are now. I'm saying, but do you... Well, I guess that, I mean, it's... So I, I would say, like, I think about Pat Wallace. So Pat Wallace just died. She was on council at 30, 31 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I sat next to her for six years. We often disagreed. Yeah. I mean, we're at opposite ends of the political spectrum. Um, that is part of the job. We are supposed to not always agree. So there's a process and, you know, I think we could always do better in terms of the process, but we should never back away from disagreeing with each other. That's the job. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we make a decision, it's a decision of council, and we move on. That is what I would say. Okay. One last thing I wanted to ask Nancy, because she had an idea, she brought up an idea in council right at the start of the term, back last year, and I, it struck me as a great idea. Uh, explain the idea and where are we at with it right now? Okay, so, this is for you, Jeremy. Yes, this is for <laughs> this exactly is, for this. you, and Jessica Wallace and all the other young, young parents. So, well, uh, so way back when I was on council, a long time ago, um, you actually had to pay for kids to go swimming or go skating or do all of those things if they were two years old or older. That was when the city of Kamloops started collecting fees. So way back when I was on council, I convinced the council of the day to make it that you had to start paying at four years old. But it didn't sit well with me. So now I'm back on council and it looks like it's gonna be seven. Whoa. So, so it's, nice. what happened is it went to the committee and the, the committee got, well, I asked and council agreed that there were, count, the staff would go away and look at what other communities do in terms of when fees are collected. And uh, it, then the report went to the committee and the committee, it was like two weeks ago or so, they agreed with the recommendation, which is that we'd start to collect fees at seven. Now that's, we, we haven't gotten through the woods mm -hmm. because it now has to come back to council and council as a whole has to agree to that. Um, but for me, you know, there's so few little kids, tiny little guys running around in Kamloops. We got to give them a break. And, and you don't think it'd be a financial hit to much of the city because you, you've well, probably looked at how much revenue is already well, gathered from that well, demographic, right? There's no two-year-old going to the pool by themselves. That's right. So They you, always have a, yeah. a 
parent or caregiver with them? So this would be an idea also maybe to improve attendance because someone will, will have to bring a paying adult and, they, and you might create a customer for life. Yeah, it's like, you know, when the circus comes to town mm, and they yeah. make it free for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's only free for the kids because the parents are going to pay. Right. Right. So, Back to music for a second. Jeremy, switching topics here. Do you have a favorite show you've ever played? One that sticks out that you're like, this is, this is the best time I've ever had on stage? Yes. Uh, apart from recording for Mike here in the River Song <laughs> it's, Studios. It's perfect uh, guitars. <laughs> <laughs> um, music in the Park this year, I think, was uh, so much fun. Our band played, and Delana was uh, seven months pregnant at the time, so her guitar was out over her belly, and, yeah. uh, and we played as, as our band. Um, with weather was perfect, yeah, and a great turnout, and yeah, just it, everything really clicked that night. It was it was good. It's and my people, show. The, people coming back to kind of for the first time in a while to that kind of experience. So you've got a pregnant wife on stage with you. People are coming back, good vibes, and it just great hair. Yeah. Best hair in Kamloops. <laughs> Best hair in Kamloops, well, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. What about worst show? Have you ever had a disaster? Yeah, um, I had a show where. Uh, like the power dropped halfway through, but only for part of the band. So like, <laughs> was Mike doing the sound that, that day? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> he's shaking his head over there. Uh, no, um, yeah, it was really bizarre because the power only dropped for half of the of the building. So it was like what you heard in front of house was just like drum noise coming across, but all of our monitors were still there. So we thought it sounded normal so we kept, kept <laughs> just going, kept going. And, like, get, yeah, and people were trying to wave at us and like we can't hear it and any bad hecklers ever oh all the time yeah really you either just ignore them or, or joke off of them you know? yeah yeah okay most most comedy these days is just responding to hecklers so yeah that's right you've been playing instruments for 40 years i played the banjo for 40 years banjo for 40 years awesome um yeah. what does that meant to your life music well I, I just love the banjo. And I would, I, I guess that, well, Barnhart Val Coffee House, it's, uh, it's not going anymore. No. That was no. one of my favorite places to play. Yeah. And you, you get up there and you play a few songs. And um, one of the things I like to do is go play at Extend Care Hospitals. And uh, so one of the songs I play always is You Are My Sunshine. And it, it doesn't matter. These people, they could sit through the whole show, but for when I play that song, they start singing. And it's it, music is just amazing. And, and Bennett will start singing it too after today. <laughs> he's, he's, Bennett didn't know the song, but now he does know the yeah, song. Yeah, he's going to sing it all That's day. That's right. Yep. It'll be in your head forever. Yeah. If there's no Barn Hartwell Coffee House anymore, you should talk to Aaron Shuffletosky over the Effie. The yeah. Effie is 422 Tranquil Road, North Camel, is one of my favorite places to go for comedy, for music, for everything. And I bet you they could set up some kind of uh, coffee house yeah. night there because it's a fantastic place. Yeah. We would sponsor that too. Yes. Work, work together to figure out something. Yeah. House drum kit or, or whatever that means. Perfect venue for it. I think we got yeah. a plan. Yeah. Loose cannons. Cool. The loose cannons. We'll do a show from yeah. the loose yeah. cannons Forever. of Camelot yes. last week. We'll do our show. That's from right. There. Yeah. yeah. We'd be the house band. There you yeah. go. Excellent. I think you've both brought a little sunshine to our show today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Uh, thank you. We'll move on to our next segment. It's brought to you by. Good morning, how you doing? Everything's fine, sir. How are you? Good, good. I'd like to make an announcement. It is cold in Kamloops today, boy, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. I'd like to warm up by shopping local and getting two of your coffees, which are the best in the world. Two large coffee, both with two cream, please. Two large coffee, two cream, yep. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to the new Playland location in Aberdeen there? Two cream. Two cream. Yeah. No sugar, right? Uh, no sugar. Anything else for you? Well, I just wondering if you've been to the the uh, Playland in Aberdeen there. The new uh, uh, the new Playland in Aberdeen location of McDonald's. Okay. Have you been there? Uh, not really. Oh, I heard it's the best in BC. I can't go <laughs> yet because I have no kids. So. Uh, I see. Maybe someday. Okay. Probably not though at this rate. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
All right, we're going to talk about the Scotties. I broke it down into four sections. Did you watch the videos? I did. They're very, very interesting. First one is kind of a local media puff piece. Yep. That's all it was. That's, I just... that's the most interesting one for most people because it's not so technical. What do you think of our city when you're here? So we asked some of the greatest curlers uh, in history, in the world, the planet, mm -hmm. what they think of Kamloops. Jennifer Jones, Olympic champion. She is double the age of all her teammates, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rachel Holman is younger but is accomplished, a world champion. She's two Scotties. Uh, Lodi Saint-Georges really stood out to me mm -hmm. from Quebec, just a personality like you wouldn't believe. So we started with Jennifer Jones and she really loves the food in Kamloops. The food here is amazing and we're all foodies and my, da the, my daughters are foodies too. So we're going to go out for some uh, a good food tonight. We went to Mitzi's, Mitzi's I think it's Mitzi's Kitchen, Mitzi's, yeah, kitchen already. Um, I think we're going to go to Twisted. We've gone to, um, we went to a great breakfast at Hello Toast. Toast. Yes. So we've, uh, you know, short period of time, we've done some, and we wanted to go for a drive. We went to Vernon because we wanted to drive through and see all the lakes, and it's just so beautiful. And I know my husband's going to take the girls up, hopefully go skiing at Sun Peak, so. It's actually the first time that I've been here, um, so, but it's beautiful. I wish I could actually live here. Like, I'm seeing Montreal now, and I'm like, mm, wow, BC is so beautiful. Um, but there's actually one of um, my boyfriend's uh, mom, her best friend is from here and she was in the stands, she was the one dancing at one point <laughs> and there and on the big screen and I just looked at her and I was like, Oh yeah, like it feels like home. Like it just feels like home. So it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, we found some good local coffee shops and some awesome restaurants. Um, and we went on a, a little hike and nice to everyone's so friendly and it's been really fun. Do you remember the names of the coffee shops you went to? <laughs> yeah, we went to Five Bean and we went to uh, Twisted Steak. It was really good. Separate. What do you family relations? Any friends here? No, but we've got like we've won a lot of we've come to BC to play, and I just love playing in British Columbia. And Kamloops is spectacularly beautiful. It's like a hidden treasure. It's been amazing. Um, the volunteers are super friendly and welcoming, and uh, the town's great. It's nice to be in the mountains, and it's uh, nice and mild out here. Oh, it's interesting. I, I always like to hear out of towner, especially f famous, you know, uh, high quality sports uh, movie stars, athletes, what they think of the city. Because everyone wants, everyone's proud of their city, even if they denigrate it. Everyone likes, everyone wants them to like the city. And they're never going to say I had a horrible meal yeah. here. But they, they, they did have good meals. And the, the restaurants and places they, they mentioned were um, Twisted Steak. Twisted Steak. Mitt's Kitchen. Mitt's Kitchen. Mitt's run by kitchen. The, I think they're the same owner. It's written by, or. yeah, it's, it's, they're, they're they're ran by Jeff and Steve Mitten, the, the Mitten brothers. They, they run a, a Mrs. Kitchen downtown and Twisted Steak. Twisted Steak used to be called Twisted Olive, and it was up in Aberdeen in the uh, Four Points Bay Sheraton um, Hotel. And it was called Twisted Olive, then it became Twisted Steak, and then they moved down to the Cake building. I only mention that because about five years ago, my wife took me out for dinner on my birthday, and we went to Twisted Olive, which is, of course, now called Twisted Steak. And it's basically the best steak I've ever had in a restaurant in Kamloops in the 20 years I've lived here. What's your favorite, uh, Mike, favorite restaurant in Kamloops? Favorite restaurant of all time was Topo Gijo's on the North Shore. Do you remember that place? <laughs> no, no, before we, our time. Monica and I were dating, and the owner, Steve Paul, would bring us in and had the best prime ribs. She would have the seafood uh, fettuccine, and it was the best. My favorite restaurant I love taking clients to and going to is Noble Pig. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I'm still a Minos guy. I think I just got a soft spot mm -hmm. in my heart. Yeah, it's I know good, it's kind yeah. of ownership's changed yeah. and the situation is a little bit. I don't know if ownership has changed, but it this did. is kind it of a weird thing it, with the the old owner. It changed about a decade ago. It was yeah. in Montreal or something? Yeah, was, and something about a poker game or something. <laughs> like side things going on there. Yes. I don't know what really happened there. No. What about breakfast? Hello Toast got to mention. I think it is our greatest breakfast. Hello Nook. Toast is fantastic and when you go there on a Saturday or Sunday you may bring a bring a book because you're going to be waiting in line to get in because it's so fun. But you know there's another place in town that not many people know about that would give Hello Toast a run for its money. It's called Kirsten's Hideaway. It's right around the corner from Lee's Music here. It's in the Acadian Motel. The motel is not a great place to go because it is a pretty run down place. I mean it is. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of activity there. However the cafe and, and, and the food there is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Clean. It smells so good. Too. Smells good. The the, the portions are, are um, ample. The price is really good. And it's just a home-cooked 
cooked home home cooked meals, unbelievable. Scott's Inn, great Scott's breakfast. Scott's Inn, another Mount great Paul, place. great breakfast. All great places for breakfast, absolutely. Right. And I think Rachel all, Holman, all locally owned, which is great. I think Rachel Holman mentioned Twisted. Yeah, she was fresh off of a loss when I was interviewing her. <laughs> oh my goodness, I have to come and ask yeah. her these. It's I get, I only I get a little bit of time to ask questions, so I got to ask my questions. And she, to her credit, endured that interview. Yeah, Lori Saint Georges made a huge impression on me. She's studying journalism in Montreal. She wants to move here. Yeah, I mean, that's that was <laughs> hyperbole. But, I know, um, but to say it's something like. I come to Kamloops in BC and then I go to Montreal and I go, uh, I'm like, I love Montreal. It's yeah. a great city. Yeah. I think she's going to be, after her curling career, I think she's got an on camera TV media career going for her because she's got this personality that's amazing. Yeah. It's her first time. She's been to three Scotties, the third one, first time with fans. Mm -hmm. And we kind of forget about that. The last two, Thunder Bay and Calgary, were right. COVID times. Mm -hmm. And they're reacting. And her first reaction just kind of overwhelmed with how cool it is to be playing in front of fans. And I thought it was also cool. Sarah Loken, actually, your thoughts on Team BC? One person from BC on the team. Well, I think it goes back to the, 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 my, my belief, and I think it's, it's God's belief that you should always have people from the province living there knowing the province to play for it. Um, they're all, all playing by the rules, including your golfing buddy. And I, I'm saying, you know, hope for the Klondike. You're playing by the rules. I'm just saying the rules are wrong. Taylor Everybody McMillan knows they're wrong. has been at UBC since 2018, moved yeah. here 2017. Clancy Grandy now works in Langley, that's, moved and that's, here last year. I said again, that's different. If you move here and, you're, and, you, and you uproot your life and you're living here and you're paying your taxes and you're struggling through the commute and you're dealing with the rain, that's great. But if you're flying back and forth just to play <laughs> because, Dubay, because you happen to be born there because your mom was running through that to me is a little sketchy and I'm like again you're blamed by the rules it's not your fault it's it's the rules and the rules are, are not they have to be tweaked Lindsay Dubay lives in Ottawa but she's moving here next year yes Sarah Loken though from God's country mm -hmm. she's from South, South Surrey White Rock South Surrey that's where you're from unfortunately not a Earl Marriott Mariner she's an no. Elgin Park Orca mm -hmm. which is a, a yeah. knock on her for sure mm -hmm. but good to talk to her about uh, the crowds this week at Sandman Center different though like it, it feels different with the, the fans in the stands because it was too bubble right so just to hear the fans uh saying oh or yay when you when you do a shot or not like it's just and you don't even know are they like clapping because i did a shot or like it's the other sheet like you never know so it's just like so different with the media also like it's just another game totally another game uh, i really enjoyed it still like it's just nice because i can actually see people <laughs> so that's awesome We work so hard for this. It's always an honor to represent your province and to have my first Scotties be in BC is just beyond words. Did you allow yourself a moment that night to kind of like soak it in and realize where you were? Not that night, actually, before this game. Um, I was just looking around all the lights and I was like, it's pretty cool. Does it make it feel more meaningful to you to have fans in the building? I love having fans, but I think I'm the kind of person that I can like give energy to my team and they give energy to me. So like it's not a must. Um because in the bubble, like we were kind of just doing our own thing. Like we were our own fan kind of things, like in the bubble. So that was pretty special too. Um but it's just so nice, like the momentum and when you do a great shot and like just to be there and like I'm just watching the stands and it's not like cards and boards with my mom face on it. Like it's actually really people you know so yeah it's just feel amazing players are happy with the atmosphere and what they're hearing from crowds but we're going to talk about attendance mm -hmm. 22,416 fans heading into today after 12 draws so they're averaging about 1868 fans exactly halfway through the, uh, the, the 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 actual tournament day wise Yes. 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 Five days in. There's still six more draws and then playoffs. Mm -hmm. I think you crunch some numbers. I think it's trending between 50 and 55,000, I think, is what it's kind of trending toward. And how does that compare to historically? Well, I mean, Penticton, is, Penticton was four years ago. 
2018, I guess. So was that five years ago? Yeah. They were 55,138. There you go. They are smaller than Kamloops. But? But they draw from a bigger area. Much larger area, yeah. Bottom line is this. I talked to Al Cameron today, the media top media guy for Curling Canada. I'd like to see every seat sold, Marty. <laughs> uh, but on the whole, we're happy. Yeah, for sure. We're, we're, we're getting very close to meeting our budget, which is always a good thing. And uh, it tells you that our ticket and marketing people uh, had a grasp on what to expect. That said, we're still in a little bit of a gray area in terms of what to expect from, uh, from current fans in that we're still... This is the first, like I said, first bodies where we've had fans in the building and we just didn't have a full grasp on, on what to expect. But Did you have a target number heading in for what you'd like to, to see at the end of the day? Well, it, did I mention every seat sold? <laughs> That's always going to be a target. But yeah, we have a budget number in mind and uh, and as I said, we're getting very close to that. Can you share the target number? It's not it, it, well it, it's not it's not seat sold, it's a, it's a financial figure and those we don't release money figures. So in terms of seat sold and, and the money that it's generated, that's what we're getting close to. Look at the attendance numbers, you can say it's tracking very close to what we targeted. Okay. Um what's a what's a comparable city? Like I you, know, you look at Penticton, they had fifty five thousand, but they kind of they, they draw from other places. Um, what, what do you think is like a, a, a fair comparable city in this you know, day and age? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, you could say a moose job, but they're close to a 500,000 city. I use this term loosely metropolis in, in Regina. <laughs> so yeah. uh, red deers in between um, Calgary and Edmonton. I don't know. Kamloops is a little unique in that it's, you know, in terms of metropolitan markets that are nearby, you're three and a half hours away from Vancouver. So, yeah, I mean, listen, we're, we CHL markets, right? That's uh, CHL kind of arenas that four to five, yeah. maybe six thousand so seat arena. That's the butter zone, and so guys will go a little below that. If you got to fifty thousand, fifty-five thousand, would you be pleased <laughs> at the end of the tournament? I think so. I think yeah. you know, obviously. We're always going to shoot for the moon, right? We yeah. have to get past that. You've got to be realistic. The, you know, the, the ticketing buying public is still a little unpredictable coming out of the pandemic. Plus, you know, the yeah. economy being what it is. So you're yeah. going to see a big uptick in crowds as of Friday because that's you sell a closing weekend package. Yeah. Uh, and that always traditionally is kind of the biggest seller. So yeah, you'll you'll see a big uptick in those uh, in those numbers. This is in terms of. The kind of the, the roller coaster ride you see in the you know, attendance numbers and event. This is tracking exactly what we normally have, right? You get opening weekend momentum. Uh, you get kind of the midweek um, lower numbers just because people have to work, people have school, et cetera, et cetera. And then the numbers will, will boost up significantly on uh, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They weren't expecting this to be the most attended event. The Briar was here in 2014. It was 65,000. That's the least attended Briar since 1988. Yeah. So that, they knew, they, they couldn't have thought, like, we're going to come in here and, and dominate. Mm -hmm. You think it's embarrassing for the city? No, not at all. No, because the cur curling, as, as, uh, curling is, I, I, I liken it to the CFL. The CFL, a lot of the headlines are, you know, the crowds are down. There's not, you're not selling out the, the, the stadiums. But the TV ratings are awesome. They're, 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 they're strong. They're, they're, in some cases, they outdraw hockey and NFL. Mm -hmm. CFL is massive on, on TSN. People like to watch it at home. Same with curling. I bet you the ratings with Vic Router are yeah. going to be super, super high. And, and the way I think, it, when, you, when we give away tickets, we, we, in a partnership with Scotty's, we have tickets we give away on Facebook and, and through our paper. And most of the tickets I gave away to, are to people who, who are just curious. They're curious to go see it. A, they know about the event. They don't know much about curling. Yeah. They couldn't tell you a hack from a hog line. Yeah. But they want to go there and just experience it and check it out. And they get really impressed and they become maybe new fans. The people who are going to buy the full ticket package and who are going to go to every game are those who already know. Those aren't the ones you're, you're trying to appeal to. They're going to buy your tickets. Yeah. Yeah. There's also, you know, like you mentioned earlier, there's the weather. There's the fact that you can watch every game on TV in the comfort of your home. Well, we're coming and, out of the pandemic right now, too. And the cost. I mean, I mean, no matter what the ticket prices are, and I'm, I have no idea whether they're high, low, or medium compared to other ones, no matter what you do these days, whether it's uh, curling or whether it's a concert, whether it's sports of other kinds, a cultural event, 
it's tough these days, and I, and I think that probably plays a factor into it. People's well, pocketbooks, they got to pinch them. Yeah, and Al Cameron tempered expectations. In the interview, mm -hmm. he said, <clears throat> there's a cold snap right now, which is good for the ice, which we'll get to, but maybe not good for people going to the rink and it's cold getting out of their houses and going to watch curling. Yeah. And also, he mentioned the fact that it is the first time coming out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. so how are people going to react to that? Are they comfortable coming back to public spaces? Yeah, yeah. I mean... Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I hope they get, I hope they break 55,000. I hope they beat Penticton. That would be kind of cool. It's a good atmosphere in there. Even, even with half, half the rink filled, it's an excellent atmosphere. It's fun. It's very, very comfortable. And people should check it out if you can. Yeah, I was there Friday night as a spectator, having some beers, went to the patch. So I got that experience. It was fine. I mean, people mm -hmm. are milling about. It's not like a hockey game where it's, ah, but you know, there's this kind of fits and starts and it's really interesting. cheering yeah, and people is. milling around talking to each other. And, yeah. There's the hardcore curling fans mm -hmm. that are there, to, like super duper wearing their province outfits. They, they, they and everything. travel with they this go. thing. Yeah. 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 Okay, ice. That was a concern. We'll get to that right now because we had warmer temperatures over the weekend. That's condensation uh, reacts. Uh, humidity reacts with the ice, creates frost, which alters ice conditions. And players are very. That's one thing. You know, when we talk about, do you love Kamloops? Of course, they're going to say we love Kamloops, and yeah, we love it. They're never going to rip the city, but. Lots of the times they'll rip the ice if it's mm. not good. <clears throat> Reviews so far have been good overall, despite the fact there was some tricky conditions over the weekend. And now it's colder. Things are getting, I think there should be in the clear now. Mike Merklinger is doing a great job from what I'm told, the chief ice tech. But hear what the players uh, had to say about that right now. Ice has been great. Yeah, uh, it got a little bit straighter. It was curling a little bit more the first couple of days, but it's been it's been great. But the ice is a little tricky. Uh, it's a little patchy in some spots and quite frosty. Um, the rainy weather here in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, we've been managing it and I've uh, been doing well. Uh, really good. Uh, definitely a little bit of frost, which it should be. And I think uh, raining all night and all day today made it a little bit trickier. Uh, but uh, overall, it's really consistent, super good ice conditions, so... Um, I think we're still kind of learning, like, the ice and where to put the broom for each other kind of thing. Um, especially for me, like, there's some runs sometimes on the ice, and it's curling a hair less on some spot. Um, the rocks are fine, though, but, yeah, we're still just learning a little bit. I Carrie Anderson seemed most concerned. Mm -hmm. She was the one that, in multiple interviews, said it's a little tricky right yeah. now, and it's patchy. Other than that, Nicholas Dean who is a multiple-time world champion, Olympic champion. He had pretty good reviews saying they've done a good yep. job considering. That was the ice. Let's talk about Vic Router. Vic Router, legend. Who's your favorite broadcaster all time? Well, if you, I grew up, hockey is, 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 is the thing that comes to mind, but I, I grew up Danny Gallivan, Jim Robson. No one in hockey right now or any sport is as good as Danny Gallivan and Jim Robson. No one. They're good, but they're not that good. But the, the best, I think, of all time is Vin Scully. He, he, he called games for the Dodgers. I can't stand Dodgers, but I love Vin Scully. May he rest in peace. He called games without a color man from 47, 1947 till just a few years ago. He called them when they were the Brooklyn Dodgers, and he moved to L.A., and he called them. And one year, I think it's 2015, it went to 17 innings, 15 innings. Giants and the Dodgers. I'm at home watching it, drinking some wine, doing some work as usual. And I'm watching the game, and it's going into 13 and 14 and 15 and before the stupid ghost runner. And it's a fantastic game. And Vin Scully is talking, and in between the plays, he's telling the greatest stories. I had to wake up my son. He was nine or ten years old, and I said, "You got to get up." And he was all bleary And I, he sat there. I'm sure, you love that. And, and I said, "You got to listen to sleep on the you got to listen to Vince Scully." So he listened for twenty minutes and went back to sleep. At least he got to hear him because Vince Scully is. Uh, if there was a Mount Rushmore, he'd be the only face on it. I think. Well, that's not true. Yes, it is. That's not true. I think. I think Vince Scully would be made for curling too. Oh, that yeah, same so. kind of pauses in between and the lyrical action. tales, and he knows so much. And the way he tells a story, I can't even emphasize how how great it is. Could you imagine him and? Vince together oh, as a man. team jeez i could die oh, happy at, at, at age 80 if i could just hear them two together because vic router is very similar because that's a slow game and you have to have a lot of knowledge and you have to be able to tell a story in a way that doesn't bore or overwhelm your yeah. your your listener and i think both of those have that quality we talked to vic he couldn't figure out his video zoom at the time so we just did it um, via phone call i'm going to play some of that recording right now i asked him about broadcasting kind of selfishly what's your tips you know what's your greatest mm -hmm. moment did you ever let people down so we'll play that clip if you want to see the full interview if you are interested go to our youtube page lots of subscribers almost 370 now and check that out but for now let's listen to vic talking about tips for broadcasters 
do you have a favorite call of your own, like a call, a call that you remember that sticks out um, that you thought, man, I really, I really kind of, I nailed that one. And on the flip side, is there a time where you felt like, man, I, I kind of missed the moment here. I didn't rise to the moment. Is there anything that stands out in those two areas for you? You know, again, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't think about it. And so in saying that, Sure, as a broadcaster, there are times you go, oh, maybe I could have said more. But if you believe, in fact, as I do, less is more, well, then I can't feel that way. I, there are some days when I hit it, uh, like 17, when I think I've, I've set it up properly. You know, we all have our roles. And, you know, Cheryl and Russ at that time, they set it up, they go to their point, and now they stop. And now it's my idea. Set it up. You know, the fact that that stone is coming down and um, Jeff Walker, wounded wing, has to get out of the way and, you know, up comes Mark Nichols and they drag it to the forefoot. Can you get it there? Yes, they do. And bang, the place explodes. Now I just <laughs> shut, I just shut up because there's nothing I can say that doesn't, the crowd doesn't say and explains everything about the emotion or the, or the players on the ice, the crying, the, 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 uh, that kind of emotion. Can I add anything to that? No. My best thing is just to shut up and get out of the way. And sometimes, <laughs> I, and sometimes I'll, I'll hear broadcasters uh, and I'll say, geez, guy, I can see it. I know what's going on. Stop, stop, stop. And, you know, when they want make that, that customary parade down the ice, I introduce them and then I get out. And I just let that emotion play. There's nothing you have to say about it. So, no, I, that's, I've always, uh, not to be too uh, wordy about it, I've always believed less is more. Thank you very much. That was, that was a great explanation. I got my own personal Vic Router calling call there, too. <laughs> I've got a huge smile on my face right now. You wouldn't believe this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's great. Um, <laughs> Thoughts on the show? It was really good. I liked it. It was the first time. It was a historic show because it's the first time we had... Uh, live music and um, they all did great and I'm always 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 envious and so envious of people who can play music because I've never I never started to learn and I don't think that way so my mind wouldn't work so when I see someone like Jeremy or Mike or Nancy or Mark and they can just pick up a guitar and jam like that it just blows me away Mike your thoughts on the show today I really liked it I liked the music end of it uh, I thought that uh, Nancy was uh, interesting to chat with um, and Chris, if you really want to learn how to play a guitar, I, I can make that happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. It's, it's easy. <laughs> yes. I'll it's bet easy. you it is. I bet, we'll have a wager. I bet you I'll win because I, I can't learn how to play guitar. <laughs> We're talking to Mike on the Magic Mirror. Still no sponsor. I got an email out to Volkswagen. Yeah. I think you might have an iron in the fire somewhere you were telling me about. Fire, yeah. mm -hmm. But uh, that's up for bid right now, as is Reader's Digest. If you're interested, email me at klw at canloopsthisweek.com. We want to thank our co title sponsors, Club Car beverage company distillery coming soon i believe in Kamloops, perhaps this summer gourds appliance and mattress center they are the only uh, appliance and mattress center on the north shore did you know that the only one and it's also fabulously free february, february? Free? yes yeah. interest free mattresses interest -free. Yeah. on sealy mattresses and of course ba -ba 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 -ba. mcdonald's for chris for bennett for magic mike and for bill uh, marty we'll see you last week